Hi everyone, I'm Ashley, a doctor student from the Biomedical Engineering Department of Finnish Shopping University, Sweden. Here I'm going to present a method for depth resolve quantification of fluorescent drugs in skin. Quantification studies based on fluorescence has been a potential non-invasive tool to assess the motility of topically applied drugs, fluorescent drugs and biomarkers, as well as for the dosimetry planning during light-based therapies like photodynamic therapies has been also a determining tool during the resection surgeries to make an informed decision about the demarcation of tumors. However, these detected fluorescent signals are heavily dependent on the background optical properties being absorption coefficient and radio scattering coefficient at the excitation wavelength and emission wavelength and also varying according to the geometry of collection optics. Hence, this complexity presents unique challenges to both the quantification and trap to solve uh, occurring of fluorescent signals. In order to quantify fluorescence in tissue, we have already presented a method based on spatial frequency domain emission, which decouples uh, fluorescence from tissue absorption and scattering. Here, I'm going to present a modified approach to that in order to localize fluorescence concentration in depth while uh, developing a multi-wavelength excitation method in order to crop different volumes of tissue based on the excitation wavelengths. So, uh, considering the background of this modality, this is a wide field imaging technique that we are employing here and which is based on structural illumination. As you can see in the experimental design, uh, here there is a digital micromirror device which actually projects a spatial frequency so this spatially varying periodically varying patterns onto the tissue sample uh, and this is emitted uh, from sources of multiple wavelength centered LEDs here we have used five different wavelengths for acquiring optical properties reflectance actually and this diffuse reflectance that is collected to the imaging optics is fired into this processing for steps uh, for acquiring uh, optical unique uh, pairs of optical properties. Once acquiring diffuse reflectance, we can change this into fluorescence mode to acquire fluorescence. Uh, for acquiring fluorescence, we have used three different LEDs so that we can go for three different uh, depths of intercation. So while integrating uh, uh, the uh, three different depth uh, uh, dependent fluorescence, we, uh, we employ that in the fluorescence mode with a long pass filter. Both of these uh, uh, fluorescence signals or the diffuse reflectance has to be processed. For the diffuse reflectance, we uh, demodulate that in order to retrieve the AC dependent reflectance alone which is a contributed form of a uh, tissue response also and this is then fed into the homogeneous light transport models could be the diffusion based diffusion approximation based one or the uh, Monte Carlo one here we have used Monte Carlo based models to estimate the optical properties from each of the points in this image uh, in order to quantify fluorescence we actually need to know to main questions uh, which is how deep this fluorescence is actually coming from is it actually the depth of the source fluorophore source itself or is it varying according to the neighboring pixels and the next question need to be addressed is how much of this fluorescence is actually collected we have collected or how much is being coming out out, out of the tissue in order to address both of these we need uh, optical properties of the background uh, tissue to retrieve fluorescence along for the quantification of fluorescence we have employed a planar illumination technique based uh, one dimensional model called Garner's model here uh, this uh, Garner's model uh, uh, gives us an optical uh, property correction factor these empirical coefficients of C and K are based on these optical properties and this is also based on the depth uh, where it is originated. So once uh, after acquiring the fluorescence image, which is a raw fluorescence, uh, we apply the corrected fluorescence image uh, that is dependent on the Garner's correction factor. You can see after applying the correction factor, the whole 
fluorescent count is reduced so this accounts for the background optical properties and here the fluorescence quantification is done on on a 12 hour based study uh, in vivo study after the application of uh, ALA administrated protoporphyrin and to occur this intrinsic fluorescence alone we have used Garner's approximation uh, which says that uh, the intrinsic fluorescence is actually uh, dependent on uh, fluorescence absorption properties at the excitation wavelength and the emission wavelength dependent quantum yield of the fluorophores and which that can be uh, derived from the known concentrations of the applied drug. However, after quantifying the fluorescence alone, we need to address two of the other problems that for the depth sensitive quantification. Considering fact that most of the models and uh, uh, acquiring uh, modalities are dependent on the approximations so of homogeneous distributions of background optical properties as well as the fluorescence distribution. So uh, as we all know, skin is a highly structured tissue with diffuse different layer specific properties. And of course, the fluorophore distribution is also non-homogeneous over the depth. So here we have two hypotheses that are originated from the favorable conditions that are brought by our modality. SFTA is, has the potential to occur independent optical properties. Uh, so using multiple excitation light, we can actually prop different volumes of tissue which are having independent optical properties and independent fluorescence. Uh, rather than a probe based technique where the source dictator separation actually limits the integration volume. So uh, at, uh, taking advantage of that, we can actually interpret the mean fluorophore concentration from those integrated volumes. Then we fit this into an, uh, here we have used a simple Gaussian distribution that assumes a monotonic degradation of fluorescence over the depth but we can uh, also uh, fit into a non-fluorophore depth variation also. This gives us the possibility to reconstruct the distribution of fluorophores at every pixel of this image. Considering this model where fluorophore concentration is varying homogeneously over the depth, we can use different wavelengths to integrate different depths so that we will have different volumes of integration and respect due to this particular volume of integration we get a mean fluorophore concentration while uh, fitting into the Gaussian shape or go, uh, here we have a uh, chosen Gaussian function uh, where the Gaussian distribution function defines a parameter as the mean fluorophore concentration and B as the uh, distribution of fluorophores uh, uh, for this method, we have employed an in vivo study based on a healthy subject, uh, which was acquired for uh, uh, hourly based 12 hour, total 12 hour period after the application of ALA administrative product uh, which uh, gave us this uh, results. And these preliminary results shows us the temporal and spatial dynamics of drug penetration over 12 hours of time plan. The first image shows the uh, image section of volar forum where the drug was applied and which is marked by our uh, uh, pencil markers. And uh, after the 12 hours uh, time points, we have occurred the penetration of fluorophore distribution which is given in the y-axis and uh, time point in the x-axis. We have taken seven time points here and uh, for the nine, around nine time point we have occurred higher fluorescence, we have seen higher fluorescence concentration. This way we have resolved four different time points and this gives us the opportunity to see when to treat and uh, how long that uh, patient need to be treated with this particular amount of track. So this gives us opportunity for uh, further quantification studies over depth 
with better reconstructions. Here the spatial dynamics shows us the quantitative drug penetration after 10 hours of topical application. Here we have taken two spatial distributions uh, that are denoted by these two lines. Uh, respectively, we have the reconstruction of these two uh, uh, spatial distribution lines uh, areas that represents the surface of the uh, topically applied drug. So, after 10 hours of application, at these two spatial uh, uh, points, we have different variations of drug penetration depth that is clearly uh, clearly uh, determined here. So this gives us the hope and of uh, a kind of uh, solid results that could be even more uh, integrated well with proper reconstruction models and uh, uh, drug regress transport uh, uh, models. Here, this is an initial proof of concept, which demonstrates the approach. This can be de uh, determined different distribution of uh, fluorescent drugs apart from protoporphyrin and this can be generalized to other fluorophores also considering the advances that can be brought into these models from the current results we have seen that uh, we were able to acquire depth penetration over 10 millimeters in depth even while using the gaussian distribution as a fitting but for future directions, we will be considering improved models for the depth reconstruction. Uh, more me uh, rigorous mechanistic model will be assumed uh, to fit in well for the uh, spatial uh, and structural dynamics of the tissue, which is having varying layers of uh, layer properties. And to make the current model uh, uh, from diffusion approximation to subdiffusive region, we need to include Monte Carlo uh, model, which holds for millimeters of tissue trials. For that, uh, we will be uh, uh, employing a kind of hybrid models probably in the future. And of course, a layered model that actually re uh, resonates with the physical domain of skin structures that may include apart from the chlorophores we need to include other chromophores and also uh, other non-uniformly varying parameters that are uh, like carotene uh, and those tissue uh, absorbers so this is how we have came up for now for the depth result quantification and we look forward to have a more rigorous transport model based approach but still uh, utilizing the multivalent uh, interrogation volumes. So uh, thank you for your time and hopefully uh, get to hear your questions and suggestions. Thank you.